so certain are you? Never tell me the odds. Do or do not. Welcome back to Cocktail Cinema, folks, your weekly movie review podcast. I am your first favorite bartender, third favorite author, Josh Price, and I am here to hijack the show because we're talking about something great. Who's we? Me, of course, and my co-host, Greg, and our hello. producer, Shasi. Hello, hello. Welcome to the show, boys. Welcome. Glad to be here. And watchers and listeners, today we are talking about one of my all-time favorites, Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back. This movie came out in 1980. It was directed by Irvin Kirshner. Uh, A lot of people think it was uh, George Lucas, but he handed this one off. It had a budget of $30.5 million, and it made $540 million. Billion. Uh, It made (laughs) half a billion dollars in 1980. Yeah, so... (laughs) Might as well. I mean, (laughs) in today's money, it it probably is close to, Mm. you know, three quarters of a billion or a billion dollars. But there's a good reason for that. That's because a lot of the same people came back from the first movie to do this second one. Grego, you want to talk on that? We'll start with Mark Hamill. <clears throat> Luke. That's Mr. Luke Skywalker. Harrison Ford. Han Solo, my personal favorite. Mm-hmm. Carrie Fisher as Princess Leia. Billy D. Williams. Lando Calrissian. Yeah. yeah. And uh, James Earl Jones, honorable mention, as the voice of Vader. Indeed. Absolutely. Indeed. Darth Vader would not be anywhere near as intimidating as Eddie Izzard said if he had a Cockney accent. <laughs> so, <laughs> hey, spot on. I'm Lord Vader. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah. So I want to I want to start this movie by talking about the end of the movie in a way. So <clears throat> spoilers for a movie that's <laughs> 41 years old. Um, uh, somebody special gets frozen in carbonite. So what you have here. Is the Cloud City Carbonite. Mm. This is uh, one ounce of French Kiss. So French Kiss is a uh, citrus-infused uh, vodka liqueur. Um, and then you've got half an ounce of blue curacao, quarter ounce of peach schnapps or peach tree, and three quarters of an ounce of pomme liqueur. Top that bad boy off with two ounces of sour. Give it a quick stir, and there's your Cloud yeah, City absolutely. Carbonites. This smells great. Oh my god! <laughs> I know, I tastes, know. Tastes like pixie sticks. It's so I don't even good. like pixie sticks. This is so good. That is so oh good. My god. Like that was why I was like, yeah. I was like, oh, this is this is some of my best work. Yeah, not this bad. Is some yeah. of my yeah. best work. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, I think we should just <laughs> we should just review this drink. Oh lord, just do that all day. Oh god, so good. Yeah, that is cool, oh man. I'm proud of that one. Right. Like I'm always proud of my work, but that is top tier. It's making me tear up. Well, you know what makes me tear up is watching this movie in a good way, not a bad way. <laughs> <laughs> Aww. Um, yeah, I I think it's it's uh, the general consensus that this is the best Star Wars movie, or at least one of you know top two. Um, and there is good reason for that. So as I as I mentioned earlier, uh, George Lucas did not direct this, and uh, so George Lucas had written and directed the first Star Wars, and then uh, on counsel from his wife, who was very involved in his filmmaking, she said, "You know, you're a little too close to the project. How about you bring in another writer and another director, and you you just kind of give them your ideas and let them build around that." <clears throat> so. Unfortunately, his first writer died during the pro- process, so he had to like finish up. But the force, she did a phenomenal job. Do- yeah, she returned to the force. <laughs> um, she did a phenomenal job. She wrote a, a darker film, and the director did a great job of putting that to film. Um, so, regardless of how you feel about Star Wars in general, uh, in as far as the rest of film goes, it is pretty clear that this has this is a movie with direct vision, and it is it expands on the lore that it had mm-hmm. uh, from the, from the first film. And overall, just it's a fan favorite when it comes to and every Christmas you can look forward to another That's one. True. That's true. That's <laughs> uh, true. I wasn't a fan of the new stuff. Yeah, but, not you know. really me neither. I was a uh, you know Return of the Jedi kind of guy, but hey, we're, t- yeah, we're reviewing this one. <clears throat> <clears throat> well, yeah, yeah. Let's let's review the good one. Let's get after let's, it. Let's 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 leave uh, my opinions on <laughs> Return of the Jedi out, out of this. We're, not, we're gonna leave my opinions <laughs> into this one. So, Greg, you and I have uh, notoriously gone back and forth mm-hmm. on the value of Star Wars and right. whether whether they're you know good movies or not. 
what do you think about this one? <clears throat> so let me prelude with saying mm -hmm. there is, I hold very much high value of what Star Wars did for movies and sci-fi and, and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. They created a, a, a dynasty, uh, you know, something that's withstood the test of time and it keeps coming back from mm -hmm. generations and generations and generations. So let me start with that. On this movie, in my opinion, I, I wasn't too pleased with some of the aspects of this. I was watching it from a critical mm -hmm. eye. Um, the cut scenes with their little, their little shrooms. Yes. Yeah. You know, that was, I know it's, it's 80s, adorable. It's, it's 80, adorable. But it's like, come on, guys, you know? And um, there was, there's major plot holes. Um, but, well, they let really? open. But it, that's what the movie is for, basically, because it's uh, apparently it's episode five. Mm -hmm. right? Technically, yeah, yeah. So they started this knowing they're going to go forward and then go mm -hmm. backwards. So it makes it hard for somebody to watch this movie as mm -hmm. a standalone film when they have 20 of them. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Plus or minus. <laughs> uh, well, let's see. Uh, nine in the main series. Then, yeah, we've, I mean, we've got 11 total. Okay. So. And then, and then and then and then series and the, the holiday right. the holiday special nobody likes to talk about. I mean, I love um, Han Solo in this movie. Yeah, of Boba course, that's awesome. Um, yeah, I love how the movie carried itself. It, there's there's action right off the bat. Mm -hmm. Love it. Mm -hmm. You know the weird alien. That, you know what? It's tough to see too. Is like the the original is not out there for us to see anymore. You know, it's like the remastered mm -hmm. version is the only stuff we can see. Yeah, with extended. So their CGI added and, and in. everything like yeah, that, yeah. so it's different than what it was. Because I remember watching this when I was like mm -hmm. nine, ten years old, and it was not the same film. Mm -hmm. But good on them for kind of peeking up, perking up the well, yeah. The loose I, ends, I, I think a lot of fans are upset about that, but you know, he did update it for the times. Which you know, when when uh, Phantom Menace came out, he remastered and mm -hmm. added added some. That's CGI. one of the newer ones that I loved. Like after that one, like the, the 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 choreography, the fight choreography from that. Okay, one. okay. I, know, I, I was know, I was sorry, about sorry. to pull, I was about to go off. <laughs> All right, that, that part strikes that is, back is, is, is missing Jar Jar Binks. Yeah, that's the yeah, only. Right, right, right. Um, I don't mind Jar Jar Binks. What I mind is the rest. He's of the, the best Sith Menace. Lord of all time. <laughs> He's well, yeah, yeah. yeah. We we'll, when we when, <laughs> when if we cover yeah, yeah seriously. Um, I I want to go back to something you said. The plot holes. Mm. Maybe I'm too close to the uh, too closely tied to it. Would you point those out to me? Well, one of them that stands out to me is mm -hmm. that random couple kisses that brother and sister shared and you don't know, really know what's going on until afterwards and you're like oh wait wait they like kind of sort of like made out well they're just that kind of family you know? <laughs> i uh, guess I mean, but they're, they're stealing kisses you know there's like two well di didn't you notice that in your like favorite star wars movie han solo realizes that while leia's kissing him that's what i'm saying like, and, and, it's but not luke, a plot hole but luke's like laying back like yeah i'm the man he like <laughs> leans back like this like oh yeah that was good he just got kissed by a warrior princess sister he doesn't know that <laughs> okay. Well, he's got the force. He should know. I mean, he got a smooch. Well, he I got guess. a little smooch. He doesn't know his dad is. He doesn't no know training. his sisters are. No. Guess, no. This is the. You equivalent. think of it so far off and in, into futuristic points of view where there would be some kind of DNA thing that's in the future. No, this that's a past. long time ago. Oh, okay. Galaxy right, far right, 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 a long right. time ago. Yeah, man. Yeah, that was galaxies. acceptable back then. <laughs> it's a different galaxy. <laughs> different galaxy, different time zones, whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was a time zone. Just because <laughs> they had better technology so doesn't mean they were more progressive. All right, well, that's that's one that was kind of creepy to me. It's creepy, yeah, for sure. Um, is there anything else that stands out to you as weird or as plot holy like that? Yeah, um, the connection between and how they actually got to Yoda's planet. Okay. Um, to Dagobah? Dagobah? Yeah, Dagobah. I don't really Dagobah. understand. Like, I know they were kind of called there. <laughs> to the <on> bodega? <laughs> <laughs> I don't really understand how that, that it just happened. I mean, you can say the force. That's that's what the whole movie's blaming this thing on, is the force is like the, the central action of everything and, and controlling everyone. Well, and, and Kenobi's over. already gone at that point. He's just yeah. guiding. Well, and, He's just guiding Skywalker to Yoda. Well, he does. He, he does. Ha like R R two D two, plot a plot a course to the Dagobah system. So there's there like yes. it is on a map. Yes, yes, yes. It's just so. I don't know. It seems far fetched. I know it's a limit. it's a galaxy far far away, but but I think that's even a big like that. Like you're saying, like I think that's a plot point for the movie. Mm -hmm. Like you know what I mean? That's okay. the most introspective part of any of these movies is mm -hmm. when Luke is trying. Do you call it introspective? I do, yeah, because oh, philosophical kinda, for sure. Yeah, he kind of yeah, had to go there, humble himself, mm -hmm. take. You know what I mean? He's losing his patience before mm -hmm. he realizes he's talking to, to Yoda, and yeah. it's funny. 
He loses I mean, his patience a lot with Yoda. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I think it's funny, like, as soon as Ben starts talking, they both, mm-hmm. like, Yoda looks at up above the camera <laughs> and responding to Kenobi, <laughs> and Luke, Luke hears it. <laughs> I am ready. Yeah. No, I, like, he, he puts it together finally. Like, right, it's, right. I well, think it, that it's... cave scene has a lot of yes. symbolism. Yeah, yeah. so the, the, the Force cave... Uh, or he's got to go in it. The 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 cave of introspection is a thing in philosophy, and I want to say Taoist, you know, hmm. uh, Taoist teaching where you you go into a mental cave and discover who you are. And the abominable, um, abominable snowman shows up and you got to cut its arm off. No, no, no. The cave, <laughs> the cave where he he goes in and has a lightsaber fight oh, with the Darth Vader that turns okay. out to be him. Understood. Um, that we so that's that's Hoth. No, it, it's no, not on Hoth. <laughs> the that's. I have I have thoughts on that. Um, <laughs> the 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 scene on Dagobah, where he has to go in and confront this imaginary, this force conjured Darth Vader, um, is important in a lot of ways because number one, it kind of foreshadows the fact that Darth Vader is his father because oh, it's it's part you, but it also shows, uh, it shows where they kind of wanted to take Return of the Jedi afterwards, because. You know, this film very much sets up Luke as struggling between his light side and dark side because he's, he is impatient mm-hmm. like his father. He is too old like his father. Mm-hmm. He is He's all of these things that his father was and things that are implied to be Darth Vader's weaknesses or, right. or Anakin's weaknesses right. that led him to be Darth Vader. Luke has all of those flaws. Yeah. And it, it, in an alternate version of of Return of the Jedi, Luke would have also fallen. Like there was an alternate ending, right? Where Luke would have no would for have sure. taken over. And we've talked about movies that have this kind of trope as well, mm-hmm. and like the Messiah trope. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like that the struggle with good and evil. Why me? Why now? Why here? This mm-hmm. falls into that. Totally. Completely. All right. Do- uh, Dogma had it. You know, yeah. just a few months back, where it's a it's 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 why Lord of the Rings. It's it, it is it is a very common thing in, in all of literature and i mean a lot of that is simply because the hero's struggle yeah the, the hero's struggle the hero's journey yeah. the hero's triumph um that those are joseph campbell tenants mm-hmm. and george lucas at this point in his life is starstruck by joseph campbell and it, it shows like you can't blame the guy like uh, th- at that age you know 25 27 i was also enamored with joseph campbell but i've come to learn he's kind of <laughs> Up his own ass. <laughs> but, you know, everybody learns, everybody grows. But it, it, it still makes for a good story. You know, those are those are basic adventure story tropes. Um, Man, this drink is delicious. It is, right? Mm. Now, I am going to throw out... I, I told you yesterday I had a little bit of trivia that I was hanging on to. Okay. So, um, ding, 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 the, ding, this movie ding, also ding. technically has an alternate ending. So when they filmed the scene where... Darth Vader tells Luke Skywalker he's his father. Uh, there was a minimal number of, pe- of people on set. Uh, it was like a sound guy, a cameraman, George Lucas, the director, and the guy who played Darth Vader, and Luke. Okay. So there's, there's like with seven people, um, which is a, a small crew. Sure. For for a film, mm-hmm. um, and the way the way it was filmed was uh, Darth Vader says. Uh, I didn't kill your father. Or, or, but, well, um, what does he say? Uh, Obi Wan never told you what happened to your father. Mm-hmm. And the next line is not "No." Like in our movie, it's "No, I am your father." Right. Darth Vader's next line is "Obi Wan killed your father." Mm. So everybody on set got that ending. The only person who knew the real line was James Earl Jones. Really? So when James Earl Jones recorded his lines, he had to be hush hush, and everybody everybody thought that Obi-Wan was going to turn out to be the villain. And then when they did the premiere, even yeah. even Mark Hamill came out of it going, I didn't know how this movie ended. All right, so I was well, going to – I was thinking about this just – and I was going to ask you this just from a writer's standpoint, mm-hmm. and Greg brought up the plot hole thing. Mm-hmm. And this isn't necessarily what I think is a plot hole, but you telling me that story mm-hmm. makes me want to ask my question even more. Like, yeah. I know George Lucas has so much of the backstory covered and mm-hmm. so much of the next movie – yeah. S- or story covered mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. to where when was that conceptualized does does somebody know when like because uh, we see like we like uh say like game of thrones mm-hmm. you know what i mean like the stories is ahead of the books by yeah. the time you're in the last season mm-hmm. and they're kind of 
scrambling to come. You know what I mean? I, yeah. we, we see a lot of times that when there's a ton of content, even stuff that's preconceived, that there's enough that gets developed mm -hmm. as it's being written. Yeah. And that kind of tells me that maybe because if, yeah. if that was the ending, right? Mm -hmm. And Vader wasn't. Yeah. And like they even talk about Anakin Skywalker. Mm -hmm. And if they, they could have just not made Vader Anakin. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Mm -hmm. like yeah. Anakin was just Luke's dad. Mm -hmm. So do you think that that was something that was developed as it was? I mean, obviously, that's yes. actually a good, they, yeah, that's a question. That's a really good question. So yeah. the the you're smirking just from, over there. Just from a writer standpoint, there. I'm, I'm curious I, I, of like I how that this. how that's conceptualized. This. No, it's a good question yeah. for sure. So the character of Darth Vader it. was accidentally named that. So he was well, not accidentally, but he was named like Darth Vader is very loosely translated in German to Dark Father. Right. Sure. So Vater. that was really initially in what we call New Hope or the first Star Wars. Mm -hmm. It was initially conceived as like Obi Wan was supposed to be the light father and Darth Vader was supposed to be the dark father, to because those are the Joseph Campbell tenets, the dark the the dark side of the father, the light side of the father. Right. Where Vader being Luke's dad comes into play, is it's that that that's not a thing until the Ruth something I forget her name the writer came in and she's like hey we're gonna turn everything on its on its side. Um, that was not a George Lucas idea. That was her, the, the writer who passed away. Amazing. That was her idea. Mm, amazing. She's cool. like, this needs to be a family affair. Wow. And it needs to be All a right. secret. So I it's mean, like... I'm not going to say that they couldn't, you know, start yeah, off mm -hmm. with Phantom Menace yeah. and going back to Anakin's origin story without that. I'm just saying that, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? There's a huge gap. Mm -hmm. When these movies came out to when we were yeah. kids, yeah. going to see them. And it's, yeah. it's right. like, Instead I've, of every Christmas. I've always kind of always known. I've yeah. known, yeah, you always know, but I'm saying I've always wondered from a writing standpoint. Mm -hmm. I know you can't tell me at, like at what point what was going yeah. on when that woman stepped mm -hmm. up George Lucas and gave him that idea. But in my mind, that was always, it was always brought up a way yeah. like that. And that's, yeah, yeah, that's it, really it, cool. Yeah, it's 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 a especially this original trilogy. It, it's it's fascinating to see how it came together mm -hmm. because Lucas was really just trying to tell a cowboy story in space while still weaving in you know these philosophical elements i mean he's, he's relatively fresh out of college so that's a really good way to put it the cowboys cowboy mm -hmm. movie in space i mean it is with, with philosophy that's that you're pretty yeah. much exactly that's that is, is yeah. like george lucas even puts it that way that's why uh luke skywalker's from a desert planet mm -hmm. okay and and it's it, it's supposed to give space western vibes not quite the way that like cowboy bebop does right uh shout out spike <laughs> um but in a in a very unique like Shane kind of way where Shane is a cowboy movie set in the desert, but it's not necessarily just a cowboy movie set in the desert. Yeah. This is, this is a space opera, but it's also a space Western and it, it facilitates the use of the action and the philosophy the way that Shane does. Shane is a very philosophical film. It's about a guy who doesn't want to pick up his guns again. And one of the tenets of the Jedi is to find peace whenever possible you know so it's someone who doesn't want to pick up weapons doesn't want to kill doesn't want to be a warrior he's just kind of right. i need to save the princess so i'm still like i'm thinking of star wars as, a, <laughs> as, a, as an opera musical <laughs> i think it would work I actually mean, <laughs> it, it would it's like it a would. symphony, <laughs> symphony right. orchestra. It's, yeah. well it's it, you know it's, it's like it's like poetry it rhymes yeah, yeah. My, Stuff, my, yeah, uh, yeah. my star wars fans are yelling at me right now oh yeah I'm sure. <laughs> such a, like george lucas when he wrote when he was like filming the phantom menace he's like Oh, it's got to start on a desert planet. Everything's got to got to rhyme. It's like poetry. And uh, but yeah, so George George Lucas had a hand in the writing of this movie. He really takes over from Return of the Jedi, and then and then just went yep bad shit. That's with my the, baby. With the original with the second trilogy yep. yeah. with the prequel trilogy. Yeah, but yeah, that's my baby. Um, I know how much yeah. he takes other people's inputs. There's like the. Like the car manual, mm -hmm. you know, you, you go back to your car manual, like yeah. for like the Millennium Falcon, like yeah. the me mechanics manual, you know what I mean? I know he like loves people's inputs mm -hmm. and the whole like fan lore behind everything takes mm -hmm. that to heart. That's really yeah. cool though. Yeah. yeah, it's, 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 it is very cool. And it's been the money fuck up another plot hole. Who's mm -hmm. driving that thing through the asteroid field? <laughs> okay. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, this, this baby's got a few tricks up your sleeve. You haven't seen yet, man. You got got autopilot. Hey. Autopilot, they're going through an astrophysics. This is not, you got to remember, this is not just any ship. This is the well, ship that made it. the same made ship the that they had to the bang on the side for you to run. Parsecs. Couple points something parsecs. It's a ship you get out of shady deal when you're a degenerate gambler. Um, if, if, if you want the, the, the boring nerd answer, uh, 
a lot of the time it's because the Millennium, like the when you're piloting the Millennium Falcon, it's you're not like driving it and steering it necessarily. You've put in coordinates and jump stops. Asteroid field. So asteroid yeah. field. Well, he's driving yeah. for that. Right? <laughs> it's a part in some of it. Han Solo mm-hmm. and Chewie and Chewie are down there. Yeah, they left poor, poor. Uh, well, C-3PO's, Poor Lando and, C-3PO's and Princess well, Leia. Leia. Uh, Lando, Lando can drive. It was originally his ship. Yeah, right. They're still, they're clanking it like a. <laughs> I'm not hey man, use this hey so man. Here, but he, he, never tell him the odds. <laughs> right. You know, <laughs> chances are, he made it. Um, no, it, it. Okay, I'll give you that one. All right, thanks. I'll give you thanks. That one. I don't. Scored. Scored. I don't see it as plot hole, but. <laughs> I think it's because Scene I'm so indo- <laughs> I'm so indoctrinated with this is what they were doing. The your eyes when the ship was so flying hard. themselves. Your <laughs> eyes rolled so hard there, your head almost spun there, Josh. <laughs> I'll, I'll give you this bottle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, um, I think this is by far the best the best Star Wars movie. I think the only one that comes close is Rogue One, and it's only because Rogue One like really tugs the heartstrings. Um, but this is this is the most cohesive Star Wars movie we've ever gotten. It is it is emotionally balanced. The action is well done. I mean we're we're it's it's I said it was a western, but it's also a samurai movie because westerns were based on samurai movies. So you have you know a little bit of sword play. It's not very good, but it's yeah, there. A neo you know? Neo Katana. Yeah. And the philosophy that comes with a Western or a or a right. samurai film is there. Um, you know, there's there's the elements of doubt. There's the elements of the growth. There's the elements of the f- the the f- the killed my family rejecting the call to rejecting mm-hmm. the call to action and uh, accepting the call to action and just all of these steps that again Joseph Campbell lays out and these are just if you just read the chapter <laughs> the the chapter outlines for Hero with a Thousand Faces, you're just reading the bullet points for the Star Wars movies, mm-hmm. which works they they're i mean especially in the first two you know new hope and 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 empire they're not trying to be anything necessarily special they're just trying to be effective Mm -hmm. um and beyond that that's another discussion but here i think it does what it sets out to do it's darker it's different it's grittier and i mean it's 1980 we we just reviewed friday the 13th this is miles ahead of friday the 13th as far as visuals and directing and storytelling 100 percent crazy yeah so, not wrong. Yeah. Not wrong. Um, I I know I should wrap this up because I will talk <laughs> Star Wars yeah. all night long. So, um, Grego, any last thoughts before we uh, before we move to? Yeah, I guess I have stuff? one. Um, just when I ask the question or anybody asks the question, mm-hmm. do you like Star Wars? Mm-hmm. It's never one, two, three. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's a whole rounded scope of things. Like yeah, you're enveloped in the whole frame of thought. Mm-hmm. So what I'm trying to do is treat this movie as a standalone film mm-hmm. and I do like the conception of these films um, mm-hmm. but I'm not going to f- feed into the hype the whole gamut of sure. the whole fair enough family of Star Wars I'll fight films. with you about that later alright you know put them on put them on <laughs> <laughs> we've wrestled before <laughs> Shasti any last thoughts uh, I guess my only last thought before I go into my Last last thoughts for mm-hmm. Raiden. Fear leads to hate. Hate leads to suffering. Yeah. Dark, <laughs> hey, Dark Side is always gonna win. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Eventually, the sun must. If set. you look throughout nine of these movies, how many good guys die versus bad guys? <laughs> and how much longer the guys on Dark Side? Okay, spe- especially in I'm the prequels, kidding. like I'm, thousands I'm the C- of good guys. I'm the die. Sith Lord. I'm, the, I'm a senior Sith, Sith Lord. Lord. Sith Lord Shaft. Fair enough. Senior Sith Lord. Fair enough. No, I love the movie. Um, I'll, I'll make my last point on yeah. the on the rating. Totally, yeah. totally. Um, I just if you haven't seen it, like how? But right. It, how did how did you find this podcast if you haven't seen this? Remove movie? the rock but, from over your you head. Know, yeah, I mean, go go watch go watch Star Wars, and if you only watch one Star Wars film, I just wanted to say I think it should be this one. I got a buddy. <laughs> Me and Greg got a buddy, mm-hmm. and he's never seen any Star Wars <laughs> at, at all. Not even like like if it's on, he'll turn it off just because. He, 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 he tells me. He tells me that him. He, look at your face. <laughs> look at your face. Hold on. Look at Josh's face. He tells me that the reaction of him telling <laughs> people that he's ever seen a, a Star Wars movie is better than any movie he's ever watched <laughs> in his entire life. And I and I'm like, yep. you gotta watch it, but maybe you don't. 
Oh, it's wow. Great. That's yeah, I know you're almost crying over there. <laughs> I'm flush. I'm flush. Putting my world in a spin. Yeah, it's wild. <laughs> I mean, the only people who haven't seen the Star Wars were in the Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They were in the Star Wars, yeah. Ted. Anyway. All right. So uh, this is That's the part good. of the show where we rate the movie. We here at Simple Opinions like to use a scale of 0 to 100 tacos, 100 tacos being the best and 0 being the worst. And I don't think anything's gotten a 0 yet, thankfully. And Greg, out of 100 tacos, what do you give The Empire Strikes Back? I'll give this short and sweet. I'm going to match the year. 80. Fair enough. I can respect it. I can respect it. Shasti. So with this maybe not being my favorite Star Wars movie. Mm Mm-hmm. Remember Rogue Squadron for 64? Oh, yeah. <laughs> my, my favorite thing about Empire Strikes Back. That was great, actually. All right. Is my the favorite fight? thing about Star Wars in general has always been Boba Fett. And nobody yeah. knew he was from the planet Mandalorian yeah. before the Mandalorian came out, right? My yeah. second favorite thing of all time in Star Wars is the mm-hmm. AT Walker. Yeah. And just that mission on 64 <laughs> Rogue Squadron. Yeah. Even the Empire Strikes Back for, for Super Nintendo mm-hmm. was really hard. And the AT, the AT mm-hmm. Walker level was completely different. It is tough though. Yeah, but I remember that. I give I give Empire Strikes Back an eighty-eight. Excellent, Ooh. excellent, nice, it's a banger, excellent. It's what banger about you, status. Josh? Yeah. Um, what is your favorite? You know what? I'll escalate. I'll escalate. Uh, I give The Empire Strikes Back an eighty-nine. I don't think that any Star Wars movie to date uh, is in the upper echelon of film in general. However, uh, there is an an a very commendable level of philosophy and story and, and, and cohesive storytelling in uh, especially this film. Um, I think all the characters really start to come into their own. And so this is, this is an 88 for, or an 89 for me. Okay. Um, I, I dig it. I dig it. I dig. And look at these poor, look sp- at these poor that. souls. We have a, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we, we have a, uh, a critic score of 94 and an audience score of 97. We're low balling this bitch. No, I'm not. Yes, yes, you are. Yes, you are. <laughs> nice drink, though. I mean, you, thank you. Thank you. But, I mean, not all your opinions can be right. They're yeah. simple, at least. Well, this is true. This is true. This is true. That was a good one. Thanks. I, I give you your points back. <laughs> <laughs> so, with our critic score out of the way, our personal scores out of the way, dear audience, what do you rate Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back? Episode 5. <laughs> um, put it down in the comments Let us know why you rate it Higher or lower Do you agree with us? Do you not agree with us? Do you think Greg's wrong? Because he is Let us know <laughs> Let us know um, And you know While you're doing that Do all the other fun things You know what they are We've talked about it We're friends now <laughs> He's right We are Yeah And even though I disagree with One of my friends tonight I still love him And it'll be okay I think Maybe <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this has been an episode of Cocktail Simba, folks. Greg, Josh, you can suck a dick. No, thank Ooh. you for being here. <laughs> no, here we go. No. I, uh, going I, to I, I, there's a lot of booze in this. I'm getting squirrely. <laughs> 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 Greg, thank you for being Thanks, here. Josh. It is always a pleasure to be here Absolutely. in the studio with you. Shasti, as always, making us sound good and yes. better than we deserve. Master of the mix over here. Oh, yeah. The modem. And from one failed Jedi apprentice to a bunch of others. Say goodbye. I am altering the deal. Pray I don't alter it any further.